Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the COSO Enterprise Risk Management ERM Integrated Framework and specifically we're going to be looking at information, communication and reporting. This is part five of five. Simply put, I already covered the first four components of ERM and this will be the fifth component. Now before I start, I would like to remind you that if you are studying for your CPA exam, I don't, I don't suggest you memorize mnemonics about ERM. I strongly suggest you understand the components of ERM. First, if you want to memorize the mnemonics as a second step, that's fine. But don't try to memorize the mnemonics, understand them, then memorize them. And that's what, this is what I can do on farhatlectures.com. I explain the material for you and I explain each component separately. Once you understand the components, then you can go to your CPA review course and use the their mnemonics to help you understand the material. So simply put, subscribe to my website. I do have multiple choice and additional resources for you, and it will help you add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam score by helping you understand the material better. Now, your risk with me is one month of subscription. You try it, if it doesn't work, you cancel. If you try it, it works, you keep it, and the potential is passing the CPA exam. Are you willing to take that risk? That's your risk. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing for the CPA exam. Also, take a look at my additional courses that I offer for you in addition to the CPA exam if you need help with your accounting courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so and take a look at the LinkedIn recommendation. People that use my system to pass the exam like this recording, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So simply put, we're going to be looking at the last component of ERM and this component has three principles. So the assumption here is I'm not going to go over ERM definition again because the assumption here, if you're watching this, it means you're, you're either familiar with ERM or, or you are looking specifically for information, communication, and reporting. In this section, this component has three different principles. Leveraging information system, communi communicate risk information, and reporting on risk. Starting with lever leveraging information system. What do we mean leveraging? It means using other things, something else to, to your advantage. You would leverage information system to support the enterprise risk management. How do you do so? There are many ways you can do so. I'm going to give you one example because information system, it encompasses many, many things. But I'm going to give you a specific example that you can relate to to get to the point. For example, we have data. What is data? It's raw fact collected for analysis. Data, big data. We're all familiar with big data. So what we do is we're going to capture, collect, and process the data into useful information. And our information system will help us do that. We can That data could be internal data, external data. We can buy this data. We can download it from a third party. It doesn't matter. And what, what, what happened is once we process this information and once we process the data into better information, it's going to help us make better decision. Better decision to do what? To run our enterprise risk management system. So data will help us, but we have to leverage our information system to help convert the data into actual decision making. What could be a good example? For, ex for example, airline companies, they could collect data about their competitor pricing model from open sources. For example, if you're an airline company, you want to go on different websites, those travel websites, and see how many seats and what prices are your competitors offering. This way you can determine your price. You, then your price is competitive. This is one way to do it. Same thing with hotels. They can go on hotels.com. They can go on travelocity.com and find out what other hotels in your area are, are, are charging. Take this data, analyze it, then make a better decision. So notice what's happening is you're using your information system, your data processing to support your decision for pricing because part of your pricing is part of your business objective. So it's, so your business objective is to make a profit, to have proper pricing. So your business is competitive. Here you are leveraging your information system. Now we have two types of data and we'll be discussing more about data in a separate recording. We have a structured data, structured data as well, organized and easy searchable and easy to analyze. Here we are looking at Excel sheet, public indexes, database files, so on and so forth. Basically structured data as rows and columns with specific 
you know, numeric figure or data that can be easily, you can run averages, regression, whatever you want to do. Unstructured data, they don't have a predefined pattern. Like what? You're look, looking at emails. Emails, it, it's Word. It's Word. Or you're, you're analyzing Word documents. You're looking at photos, websites, which is the information all over the place, text files, and you will try to make sense out of it. You mean, both data are important. You want to have a structured data, and we'll talk about data later on because it's easier to analyze. Okay. Now, communicate communicate risk information. Remember, in the first four components, we talked a lot about risk. We set the risk. We determine what our risk is. We identify it. We assess it. We prioritize it. But at the end of the day, we have to communicate this risk to support ERM. So each person in the company, they have to know what risk do they deal with. Now, some 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 departments, some com some departments, some individuals might be responsible for different type of risk. For example, the person in the warehouse may not worry about the foreign currency risk of the company because that's not their concern. Maybe the risk in the warehouse is safety. Okay, so yeah, so you don't, you're not gonna, you're not gonna communicate the same information to them that you communicate to your account receivable or foreign currency transaction desk because they will be interested in foreign currency fluctuation. But you have to communicate risk to through the organization you have to have an open communication channel and the communication has to be to internal parties and external parties sometimes as needed for example you want you, you may want to report certain risks to the to the to the fda or to the I, irs i'm not irs the sec or the faa depending on what industry you work with okay or the department of labor you have to communicate those risks obviously the management and the board of directors they should be in continual communication about risk because they want to see what's going on with the risk appetite. If we need to reduce it, increase it, how are we doing? Now, how do we communicate risk? There are many ways you can communicate risk. Basically, meetings, uh, emails, written documents, public board, town hall meeting, one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion, whistleblower hotlines. There are so many different ways that you could communicate risk to people within the organization, people to outside the organization. But that communication has to happen in support of the ERM. So everyone is responsible for certain business objective, for certain strategy. They need to be aware of the risk involved. This way we are in control. In addition to communication, we have to report on risk. How do we report on risk? Well, not only risk, we report on the risk of the company, the culture, the performance of the company on the, across different levels. Now, why we, we need to do that? Why do we need to report? Again, to support personnel, to support their decision making, understand the relationship among risk culture and performance because people who are making decision they have to they have to they have to have that information why because they set the strategy as as i just mentioned earlier you have a strategy you have corporate governance you have day-to-day -day operation they're all interrelated so you have to communicate and report make sure everyone is on the same page depending on their risk risk responsibility okay so the information obviously has to be accurate complete clear and has to help you have a forward looking decision so it should help you make a better decision how often should you communicate how often should you report on risk not communicate report on risk as well well it all depends on the severity of the risk and how, how what's the priority of the risk for example if you're dealing with crisis like if you if you if COVID nineteen is is affecting your business, you have to basically report on how what's COVID nineteen doing to your risk on a daily basis until because it's severe and prioritize risk. So depending on how severe and how prioritized, sometimes you want to report on a weekly. For example, uh, if you work at at a place like Walmart, they may report on safety within the store on a weekly basis. What's happening on a weekly basis? So depending on the business that you are in, and including reporting on risk, you want to know the difference between. KRI and KPI. KRI are key risk indicators. They are predictable. Predictable. In other words, they're going to give you a future, a future indicator. They're predictable. Future, uh, a, fu a futuristic point of view of unfavorable event that can adversely impact the organization. That's what KRI are. They monitor changes in the level of risk exposure, contribute as an early warning system. Notice. KRI, it tells you something might, something is changing, be, be aware of it. It might affect your risk. So those early signals, if you can detect them early, and, and enable the organization to report risk, prevent crisis, and mitigate them in time. Okay? They can be quantified in terms of percentage numbers, or they can be in terms of high, low, medium. Okay, An example of a KRI is an upward trend in the default rate by large customers in a specific industry. So you have many customers, but you're noticing in one specific industry and their large customers, let's assume you sell to 
um, uh, con uh, building construction companies. One of your customers, one of your large customers, well, not one of your large customers, one of your customers is, but you also sell to other industries, not only building industry, you sell to retail, you sell to uh, health industry, but the, the construction, the construction, you're noticing an a default, the default rate in the construction companies are going up. So this is a key risk indicator. It's telling you something happening in that specific industry. Make a note of it because you're looking at this information and you're comparing it to health, the, the hosp hospitals, and the hospitals are doing well. They're not defaulting, but the but the construction business are doing are not doing well. This is a KRI. It's a futuristic indicator. It's an early warning system versus key performance indicators. Those are designed as to offer a high level overview of the organization performance. Okay, so they do not offer early warning signals. So know the difference between performance and risk. Risk, it, they're warning you. There's risk coming. Be careful. Keep uh, key performance indicator just telling you what's going on basically after the fact. Okay, they are important to analyze trend and monitor performance, but usually after the fact. So an event already occurred, for example, now you have 5% of your loan portfolio is in default. Well, that's fine. Now I know this. It's historical data at this point. It will be part of my key performance. But as that default rate is going up in a particular industry, I'm going to capture this through what's called KRI, Key Risk Indicator. Okay, that's the difference between the two. Make sure you know the difference. And basically, we covered the five components of ERM, as I mentioned earlier, don't try to memorize them. I mean, if you want to memorize them, that's fine. But understanding them is better than memorize them. Let them make sense. Complete as many multiple choice as you can. I'll have multiple choice on my website. That's going to help you practice. And you want to do that in addition to your CPA review course. Once again, give me a chance. I can help you. I'm not going to. I can't help you by myself. I can help you in conjunction with your CPA review course. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.